Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. Work on the Splunk as a solution architect for one of the company. Uh, it's almost uh, uh, six years now. So I mainly work for Splunk. Also, I work for uh, other analytical tool. Specific to Splunk, uh, we work for various clients uh, mainly to deliver uh, Splunk use cases. So it is starting from you know setting of uh, Splunk environment to till uh, you know setting of various use cases. Right. So we have the team of 22 members. We together we build use cases. Also, you know we. Uh, develop uh, the apps to the various customers so when I say apps in this Splunk you can build use cases uh, kind of apps right so the use cases it can be anything starting from ITOA or security or uh, it can be uh, you know revenue based business use cases yeah so as far as training is concerned now uh, it's almost uh, three three and a half years experience now on the training so I can count in term of training batches more than 60 plus so far. So that's a quick introduction on my end guys. Uh, so let's jump into uh, today's uh, the introduction class part. Uh, I'm just sharing my screen. Uh, guys, are, you're able to see my screen now? Can anyone confirm? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Anand has confirmed, yeah, thank you, yeah. So the Splunk training, uh, it generally comes in two tracks. The one is Splunk uh. admin. Okay, so hope you're able to see my screen now again. Uh, yeah, there are two tracks uh, we were talking about. One is a Splunk admin, other one is a Splunk development track. Okay, so generally in the Splunk training, so we cover uh, these two. Okay, the admin, it is 16 hours and Splunk development it is nine hours and uh, Splunk enterprise security that is specifically for people who are looking for security uh, role role mainly the SIEM so the Splunk uh, enterprise security uh, it is additional 10 hours classes right so but it is always recommended to take admin first then the development or development first or admin so once these two are covered, then with some gap, you can go for the enterprise security. Okay. Now in the admin topics, we are mainly targeting on the Splunk administration part. So when I say administration, so it's mainly setting up Splunk environment, right? So if you go through the modules which we are going to cover, so there are 10 modules in the Splunk. Yes, total there are 10 models. Okay, so starting with the first model, uh, in the initial module, module, we are going to discuss on mainly on the introduction part. What is Splunk, how it is placed in the market, what is the roadmap for the Splunk. We also discuss architecture, the various components, the functional roles. Yeah, so we are also going to discuss the hands-on part, the installation. So there are mainly two types of installations. So we are going to discuss how we can set up our own Splunk installation. Yeah, so this complete, uh, you know, the training, it's hands-on. We are going to do the installation on one of the cloud instance. Yeah, so then uh, we discuss on the installation Splunk in detail, like you know we install it on single box also we are going to discuss how we can set up the cluster then we can discuss in terms of hardware and OS recommendations okay mainly on the sizing part we will discuss the directory structure so when I say directory structure uh, the Splunk administration work uh, you can do through the web interface okay so that is a one interface so you also need to perform some of the administration tasks over the command line yeah so if you wanted to do activity on the command line so you should know the directory structure as well so in the directory structure we are mainly going to discuss uh, the what are the folders files are available inside the Splunk installation folder why those folders are what is the significant significance of each folders and files yeah so then we discuss, uh, you know, various services which are running to, uh, you know, make Splunk up. 
understand the home page of Splunk. It is mainly the web interface of the Splunk and various commands for managing Splunk. Yeah. So then uh, the module number three, so it is mainly on the license management. Again, Splunk is not uh, kind of in freeware or open source. Uh, it's an enterprise tool. So to use that enterprise tool, you need to have license. Yeah. So here we are mainly going to discuss how to calculate the license requirement, how to monitor your license consumption, how to apply license keys to the environment. We are also going to discuss the various uh, uh, you know Splunk uh, license server types here yeah so the next we get into the basic data input now in the Splunk the data is key all right so we need to integrate the various data sources and we need to onboard data to the Splunk right the basic data input uh, this is a one way of uh, bringing data to the Splunk through the Splunk interface web interface that we are going to discuss in the later point we are going to discuss the various uh, other data sources right so we are also going to discuss on apps like in the Splunk we build the use cases kind of apps so example if you take your Android phone uh, so if you are the Android developer so you can develop the apps or you can go to playbook and uh, you know uh, create the uh, download the apps and you can start to use right the similar way in the Splunk also the, there is an apps concept. So we are going to discuss what is apps and various uh, installation method, permission, provisioning, all those stuff. Then the Splunk index management, it is very, you know, crucial part of the Splunk. Uh, we are going to discuss, this is kind of the database within the Splunk. Uh, we are going to discuss, you know, how to create an index, you know, you are going to fine tune the performance of the index. Uh, data retention, data replication, yeah, all those aspects we are going to discuss in the Splunk index management. Then the user and access management, that's mainly for uh, access control. Then we have universal forwarder. So this is the one way of onboarding data to the Splunk using the agent, yeah. So other way of data onboarding, we are going to discuss like a device integration. Can it be IoT or can it be network or firewall, IPS, IDS devices? So then we also discuss how we can integrate database, right? So if you have some RDMS database, there is some data inside the database. So you can bring data to the Splunk and do analysis. The final one, again, very, uh, you know, important topic, Splunk clustering. So we are going to set up clustering in horizontal mode, you know, starting with five nodes then we can discuss how we can increase number of nodes, performance monitoring, security, all those aspects. The final topic we mainly discuss the Splunk setup monitoring. All right. So within the uh, the Splunk itself, it is it's going to be critical, you know, as as it you know goes around. So we need to uh, monitor Splunk environment itself. So the Splunk monitoring it will helps to monitor the various uh, health parameters, performance parameters of the Splunk. Yeah. So these are the topics for the Splunk administration. So any query are this? Anything wanted to clarify? Anant or Ramesh? Yeah, Okay, no problem. So the next we have development track. Uh, in the development track, uh, we have topics specific to how we can build use cases on the Splunk, right? So in the Splunk, we have uh, the language called SPL. It is more or less SQL queries with additional uh, commands. So we are going to learn those commands and we are going to understand how we can use those commands on the various analytical use cases. Right. So these are the commands mainly like uh, searching, filtering. So we have uh, fields, we have commands like a search command, transforming commands, reporting commands, 
right so we also learn how to build a query for for various use cases then once we get the result so you can create you know reports dashboards we can create a alerts right so we also going to discuss on various uh, reports and visualization part we also going to discuss how we can generate action out of your analysis right so splunk development again it's a 9 hours training it's mainly in high level to you know uh, give insight it's how to develop use cases on the splunk right so once you create your own apps so you can create a use cases as per the requirement yeah and this complete training again it's hands on now we are going to set up this environment on the cloud and uh, i'm going to guide you each and every step and so on but yeah chris i have one doubt uh, just you are saying yeah. like the use cases you can create what kind of use cases uh, will receive for this uh, yeah so now in the splunk development uh, we have three projects to execute uh, the one project i can explain so example if you have a web server right or if you have a website and if you wanted to do a analysis right in term of analysis like how many users are coming to your website what is the performance of your website what are the errors are getting generated right and the trend for your website so you can also generate is anything attacks happening on your website all those data points generally we get it from web servers the one of the use case i am discussing and that data can be brought to splunk and you can do analysis right the similar way we have other projects like we have data set from the zomato you know the database right so in the zomato there is a data points like you know how many uh, delivery centers they have how many cuisines they have which are the countries they have service now based on the data set you know we we are going to generate some use cases like in term of analysis uh, which is the best uh, rated uh, delivery uh, you know out points for the zomatos in the world in the country wise so we are also going to analysis which is the cuisine it is highly you know having demand in the market those kind of analysis yeah so those are projects which we are discussing but once you work on those three projects so you can apply those concept to any other use cases when you are actually getting into the work yes, yes sorry yeah 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 i'm clear yeah. okay so that's some quick on the outline part uh, what exactly we are going to cover okay so that is a 25 hours and if required you can appear for enterprise security that is additional 10 hours yeah so now uh, now what is Splunk and you know how it is placed in the market uh, you know quickly to introduce yeah so in the Splunk overview uh, this is a quick high level understanding how Splunk can work for you okay Splunk as I was discussing it is mainly the analytical tool yeah so it can collect data from the various data sources when I say various data sources it is 400 plus which we currently count but it can go for any data sources and once you bring the data to the Splunk you can build the use cases so there was this question you know what are the use cases we can build so the use cases can be application delivery mainly for data center application monitoring IT operations mainly security compliance performance right capacity management of the data centers security and compliance then the business analytics anyone can use Plunk for you know business analytics in the more revenue finance related use cases yeah so you can also use Plunk for industrial data and internet of things when I say industrial data mainly IoT use cases right so you can get data from the sensors in the factory manufacturing unit you can get data from you know from the uh, motors motor vehicles right and you can use those data for the analysis right and these are the use cases and uh, in terms of uh, the key architecture difference from the traditional database to this plunk because that's how you know 
you may get questions around you know why you cannot do the analytical use cases on the normal database the key difference is uh, in the normal traditional databases uh, if you take RDMS right so whatever data you bring to this Planck the RDMS it's generally expects data should be in the structured format when you are writing it right and when you are reading back or searching back also it is expects in the structured format right so you need to create a schema then you need to create a table and rows and you need to keep feeding data to the databases but when it is in the Splunk the Splunk the schema part or structuring of the data it only required during the search while during the indexing or while writing to the disk so it will store the data just like a raw data right so example you are getting data from the excel or uh, excel is normally structured data if you're getting from log file right if you're getting data from the sensors so it can be any format right so this data can be simply get into the Splunk and it can be stored as normal flat file in the disk and when you are searching the data Splunk will apply the schema on it right so when I say schema in the Splunk mainly we do analysis based on the field and the field name so field and field name will be generated automatically by the Splunk or sometimes we may require to you know manually parse it so even that happens during the search time okay so and again the search layer and the data store layer are completely isolated I mean they are independent so again there is no dependency and that really gives good performance when you are searching large set of data yeah there's a key difference how Splunk is you know very faster compared to any traditional databases now these are again uh, pointing towards uh, Splunk now so this is something the quadrant uh, we generally you know get it from the Gartner so Gartner is you know third party vendor so you may be knowing it so they generally release the quadrant uh, for each product okay with respect to the product uh, uh, vendors right so which product is doing good in the market now this particular quadrant it is specifically on SIEM part when I say SIEM it is security analysis uh, uh, in a tool point of view okay now Splunk it is not just a security tool most of the people think you know it is just a security tool or you know security analysis tool so that's not true so we have saw in the earlier slides Splunk can be used for any use case it's kind of platform right and now the security it is one of the use case in this plan okay so just one out of lot now Splunk has got its own security app we call it as interface security so based on that app this quadrant is okay so based on that one particular app and other tools the comparison is here specific to SIEM now if you look at uh, this quadrant is for 2018 okay 2019 it's not released uh, it, you can, we can expect it any time this month uh, so here if you look at uh, there is a product from IBM there is something called QRADA and Splunk is slightly behind from the IBM okay so but if you look at IBM it's there in the market for quite a long time but Splunk which picked up for the security from the last three years and three years itself it's it's almost year to overtake the IBM QRADA product and it is expected to take over this year right so even in the quadrant uh, point of view so generally this quadrant gets created based on ability to execute of any specific uh, product area and the completeness of the vision okay now here if you look at the Splunk as ability to execute it is slightly higher than IBM so only it is slightly lagging in the completeness of the vision so that might be taken care of this year yeah so that's one quick uh, you know the market share point of view specific to security any query guys anything wanted to ask
Yeah. So now this is something specific to Splunk roles. Now someone was asking what I can get uh, you know, out of this training, right? So you have option to get a job, either of these four. You can be Splunk admin, where you are going to perform only the Splunk admin task. Mainly where the enterprise, they are very large set of Splunk. Splunk developer, you may work only for developing the use cases. Splunk admin plus developers, you may be some small scale or medium scale companies, they may expect you to do both. Yeah, the complementary something, if you have already some security skill, you can use Splunk as a complementary for security point of view and you can use as Splunk. Yeah, so that's how Splunk can be, you know, uh, used as your career uh, skill. So any query here? Uh, Suresh, yeah. uh, bro, actually, <laughs> uh, most of the your uh, slides and uh, whatever you giving the information now, those are mm -hmm. related to completely Splunk. It's not related to Sim, right? Uh, it's not related to Sim. So that's what the Splunk is not just a Sim. So, but if you wanted to learn Sim, then you need to have Splunk admin and development skill as well. So the reason is the sim generally it's a complete tool, right? I mean QRAD or, or maybe any other tools. But yeah. the security requirement in the companies it is not just on the tools part. There are a lot of things may be required to customize. A lot of things you may require to build yourself. So if you wanted to do so you need to have admin and development skill as well. Okay. But yeah. actually, so other okay. thing, uh, yeah. well, suppose uh, in the somewhere in the slide, it's, uh, you say like uh, apps, Splunk apps. Yeah. The apps actually we can create ourselves or uh, already existing one. So there are apps like example enterprise security which is pre-created app but you can also create your own uh, you know based on our track development track so if you learn the development track so you can develop your own apps okay bro let's suppose if i learn the admin and developer mm -hmm. how much it is for me for uh, actually okay my uh, that's why actually before I join the classes, uh, I need more information because completely I'm looking for the sim. So actually why I interest in the Splunk is, Splunk is in the, I mean, in the top, top uh, five is one of the best tool in the sim. That's why I am mm -hmm. very much interested right. to learn this. Right, right. But actually, so now, <laughs> hmm. Uh, see, now the SIM something, so when it, when you say Splunk security, right? Okay. So that is just your uh, enterprise security, this part, right? So now okay. if you wanted to do this yourself, so example, when you say enterprise security part of Splunk, it only help you to do the analysis. Now most of the companies, when you land as a SIM engineer or SIM specialist. Bro, can you repeat again, bro? Yeah. So what I was saying is, so when you learn Splunk enterprise security part, so enterprise security, it's app within the Splunk and these are the topics are covered as part of that. Okay. okay. So, but if you want to learn this, so these are the basics. The Splunk admin and development is a basic. Okay. So this is kind of prerequisites or I can say foundation topics. So if you okay. directly get into Splunk Enterprise Security, so you can just learn how to do the analysis. But in the real-time scenarios, so you also need to know how to Splunk set up, how to onboard the data, how to manage the users in the Splunk, all those steps. Thanks for watching the video. For full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.